This podcast episode of Nerds New Sexy Entertainment is sponsored by Magic Mind. Mini Boss. What is up, all you sexy nerds? Grizzly McB here, and you are listening to and watching Nerds New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast, episode number 165. Of season nine, mini boss, mini boss, mini boss. Hell yeah! And I am joined today by the man, the myth, the legend himself, the one, the only, Shatterblade. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Glad to be. Here. I should have saw it coming. This fucking dickhole. <laughs> I'm saying tampering yourself. I was. I was, man. I was. He's he's done this just about every episode since last season. <laughs> and then he fucking threw me a curveball. So we've got Shatterblade89 and the man himself, Wildfire1, joining us today on this podcast. Welcome. How are you guys doing today? Pretty good. It's been, I just got off work. I'm ready to get drunk and do a podcast. Let's do it. Oh shit, we're drinking during this podcast? Hold <laughs> up. <laughs> the topic we're we're talking about today, Shatterblade. You read my mind. Um so the topic for today is centered around Ubisoft. And while while yeah, we're a little bit late, we still or I, at least I feel like we should talk about how their cloud service is changing, you know, evolving, uh, as well as other people's thoughts and opinions on it. Evolving. I'm using air quotes for those who can't see. Evolving. I'm just, I'm just going by with what Ubisoft himself is saying. It's, it's their evolving. words. Their words. Stealing your money. <laughs> air quotes. That's how I see it. It's, um, it, they're just greedy because, so Ubisoft Plus, for those that don't know, is a Cloud gaming service similar to what um, Xbox Game Pass. Xbox, yeah. Well, oh no, no Xbox Game Pass because you pay a monthly fee to oh. download the games mm-hmm. and play as long as you have the subscription. Okay, that makes sense. Um, whereas before it was only I think seven ninety nine. They still have that plan for seven ninety nine, but now it's only limited to certain games. But let me guess, now there's tiers, right? Like yes, yeah, so there, there's another tier. The other tier is. Seventeen ninety nine. Yeah, that sounds about right. Pay us more money, get more shit. So, the so only for those thing... of you that, that, that can't do math, so <laughs> for for the PlayStation Store for their premium, it's a hundred dollars a year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, 120. No, no, 120, 130 in that 120, ballpark. Right? Yeah. They want you That's... to pay an extra eighteen dollars a month. A month. To play their glitchy ass games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and and let me let me also explain that you do that with the PlayStation Plus, you get a plethora, a whole shit ton of games. Mm-hmm. But a now whole if shit you want to play any Ubisoft game, whether it's on the PlayStation Store or not, you have to pay an extra seventeen ninety nine a month. Wait, is that uh, is that what, what it says? Is, what I'm looking at right here. No, well, as as far as I know, for at least for Xbox side, if you get the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, you also get certain Ubisoft games with that as well. I'm Which I'm that... I'm certain that there's going to be like a contract where they they they're not going to make you pay extra for the games for other platforms because that would just be that would just be asinine. I hope you're wrong, Grizz. I really do because if that's the case, then Ubisoft is going to lose a lot of money. Yeah, that's looking like that's just going to be for the Xbox, PC, and the Amazon Luna. Mm. And that's for the Ubisoft Plus Premium. Yeah, so... So... For the PlayStation, Plus Extra and Plus Premium, um, and it's also available through the PC, through the Ubisoft Store, it's just $7.99 a month. So, (laughs) it's looking like... Xbox is getting boned for an extra 18 bucks a month. Well, like I said, so as from what I recall, the base plan, the 799 plan, has 50 games, but they're not the newer games. 
Yeah, they're probably the old shitter games. I still still like Rainbow Six Siege, The Crew 2. They're still good games. But if you want to play the brand new games like Crew Motor Fest or New Prince of Persia game, I I don't remember if that's released yet. Buy them. (laughs) You have to upgrade them. You have to upgrade to it. Which, if you beat the game in a month, which, if you're a hardcore gamer, you're going to beat in probably two to three days. Mm-hmm. It's a good deal to get it one month and, you know, get multiple beat games. it. Yeah. And, yeah. But if it's a multiplayer game, like Crew Motor Fest is primarily a multiplayer game, or any other brand new multiplayer game, you're paying $17.99 a month to continually play that multiplayer game. At that point, once you hit the fourth or fifth month, you might as well just buy the game outright. That's true. Yeah. But but then that's a great segue to what I'm going to talk about now. They uh, one of the one of the execs from Ubisoft was like was came out and said buying isn't owning. Let's yeah. let's discuss that for a second. You're basically telling us that if we buy your game, we purchase a game, and how it's been for years is you purchase the game, you own the game. That is your game. Yeah. You know you don't own the IP. You don't own the IP, but you own the game. You can play the game. You can do what the fuck you want. You want to buy? You can sell it. You can give it to a friend. Whatever the fuck you want. And now this guy's out here telling us that buying isn't owning. Well, when and from my understanding of looking at the terms of service, when you buy a game, you buy the license to use their game on their platform. And there's there there's you know in between the lines wording of they have the right to terminate that license any way they see fit which is in my opinion bullshit i i get it like if it's cheaters people hacking or doing something inappropriate but like if they decide like oh you know what we're not gonna let this person play this game just because we feel like it and i'm not saying they're gonna do that but that's an option you know what i mean and i can i can understand terminate a license of one game two games if you know if you're a cheater, you cheat multiple games, something like that. But I've had experience with Ubisoft where, for some reason, I can't remember why, and no, I did not cheat. Most people would automatically assume that, sadly. My account completely got locked down, and I was, I'm was i still unable to log in to play any of the games. I spent several hundred dollars on multiple games, and they said, well, you, you don't have the right to play these games anymore. Yeah, that's theft. Is in my opinion, that's just it, straight it, up theft. It one hundred percent is in my opinion. So the Ubisoft sex uh, sex say you know, own uh, buying a game is not owning. Then you know, downloading game isn't piracy. Oh yeah, you know, and I I saw that a lot on like Twitter and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, and I, I hate to say it, I I agree one hundred percent. I think that if if then, then piracy isn't stealing. If downloading a game isn't owning, then piracy is not stealing. You uh, can't have it I, both ways. I still have the re- receipts through like PayPal and through my email of me buying the game. So I technically still technically own it. So I should be able to yeah. obtain that game through another alternative way and legally play it. Yeah, because you've bought it. You put you spent money for their services and then they denied your service. Mm-hmm. Which is and, theft. <laughs> Uh, I have another story about Steam doing something similar, or not Steam per se, my you know internet, because at least like Comcast, if you download illegal uh, copies of games, they'll mail you, email you, hey, we've noticed you're downloading you know this torrent or that torrent, mm-hmm. please stop. Yeah, they don't they don't shut off your internet after you know, they say uh, if you get this enough, they will shut off the internet. Yeah, yeah, but they don't do it. They don't do it with the first fucking warning. You know what I mean? Uh, or the first nine, ten warnings. <laughs> this was a case of I bought uh, Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition through Steam, and I downloaded mm-hmm. it through Steam, so it's a fully legitimate copy. I downloaded it, bought and downloaded Fallout 3 Game of the Year, and experience like, hey, you're downloading a torrent of a cracked game. And I'm thinking, no, I'm not. Apparently... Um, both Steam, you know, Steam knows that you know something like that happens, and they just told me to contact Comcast with like the receipt and all that. Uh huh. But even even in a sense of buying legitimate games, companies still mess up. Oh yeah, I, you know, like 
you know, I, I'm sitting here bashing on Ubisoft, but I'm going to say this also in the same sentence. Like, companies do mess up. Pe- they're not, mm-hmm. pe- they're only human. They're not, they're not perfect. The a- accidents happen. You know what I mean? Uh, but it, but oh. in the case of Ubisoft, where they're saying, they're greedy. Yeah. That's, that's what it comes down to. That's, that's hands well, down right the problem is here. The, the only new thing besides the, you know, different tier and the more money for the tier. The only new and possibly good thing is you're able to play brand new games. Yeah. Whereas before, um, where you're able to, um, have like ten hours or so in a brand new game. I might be thinking of Origin, but were you were able to play a brand new game for an X amount of time, then you have to buy it. Mm. Well, this is this is also kind of a. Pr- what I feel a problem, the problem that's happening here is that it feels like every game developer feels like they have to have their own version of Steam. Yeah. Their own, their own version of, of whatever to get more money. They see like, they see Nintendo, you know, that has a console and PlayStation that has a console and Xbox has a console doing this stuff. And they decide we're going to jump on the bandwagon, but wait, we don't have a console. How can we fuck people today? And that's what it feels like it's coming down yeah. to. You know, it's what it, it feels like it's coming down to them just trying to swindle us and then pretend like we don't see it. You know, yeah. it, you get an you get an, you get an exec. Imagine someone from Sony from the PlayStation getting on there and going, you know what? You can you can give us your money, but you don't own the games. Do you imagine? Can you imagine? And, and I think uh, while they might not outright say it, I think you, if you look through the terms of service for using their platform for buying their service. I think the wording is in there as well. Yeah, but at least they don't fucking tell you that or I'll op- outright say yeah, I it. I would rather company. I would rather company say it up front so I don't have to look, look through the contract, look, okay, which well, we're well, technically supposed to read. I, I've got a point here. I've got a point here. Okay, so what if? Just what if? Hypothetically, there was one person out there that got mad at Ubisoft. And went through their terms of service and saw this, right? Because if you think about it, other games, like like Shatterblade said, other companies have the same exact thing in their contracts. For one simple reason. What if that game is just past its prime and they have to shut down the servers that you play on? Assassin's then you've Creed bought Black the Black. game and you can no longer play it because there are no servers to play it on. Which inevitably happens to really old games. Exactly. Uh, Not all of them, but some of them. Uh, well, so that exact thing actually happened to where Halo. it was... Well, well, no, um, Bethesda, when they mm-hmm. re-released uh, Doom, um, I think it was on the Switch console. But when they released Doom... Uh, they had it so you had to log in and connect to the Doom servers. And it, this isn't like Doom Eternal and stuff like that. This is the OG. Yeah, the original uh, Doom. Doom. But they had it set up to where you had to log in to the servers. But once the servers went down, people weren't able to play it at all. They actually had to rush together and make a patch to where the game itself went around needing that connection to play. And see, I think that's a good example of like the devs that fucking up, you know, like we were talking about how sometimes it Mm -hmm. happens. Um, But I, I, to be honest with you guys, I would much rather it be in the contract and them not bragging about it open in in an open like forum or whatever, because at least if I, if, if something happens, like say a PlayStation, like you're saying it's in their terms of service. If something happens and like I didn't read it, that's on me, right? Yeah. Instead of them going, ha ha, nanny nanny boo boo, we fucking stole your money. I would rather, much rather, it be on me for not reading it than have them fucking shove it in my face. Yeah. You know, and it imagine imagine the audacity of going, oh, owning isn't your buying isn't owning. When for years, if you bought a cartridge for like a, a SNES or a Nintendo. Buying was fucking owning. Yeah. Yeah. When did the, the rules don't just change like that? They don't. Now, 
now for at least Nintendo uh, for the Switch, if you buy a cartridge, the full game is on that cartridge. Yeah, minus any brand new updates. Yeah, the but now you buy a. I don't know if it's with PlayStation Five, but I think it is. So so, so what if you buy a brand new PlayStation Five game and go to pop it in? Does that do like a fifty eighty yes. update? It, yes. You know why? Because it, it's why? downloading the game. I know. Hundred percent. The the the, the Blu Ray disc, which normally can hold forty gigabits, which you know back in the day that's a lot. Now it's not really. Now now it's just lot. the it's the what's it called the uh, the installer. The installer. It's the, the installer. The only thing that's on that disc, in my opinion, I have to look at a physical disc because you could tell on the disc by how many rings are actually visible. On yeah. Disc. But um, I believe that. On the disc is the license to on uh, go to or to connect to the store and mm-hmm. redeem a code in the store to download it. I I 100% agree with you, and we could be wrong, but I I that it just that makes the most sense. You know, because it is you you get on there and you download you're downloading 40 to whatever giga gigahertz or gigabytes or whatever of, of fucking information. You didn't have to do that in the old days. Mm-hmm. What's that, Grizz? Making fun of your gigahertz. Well, whatever, dude. It, uh, but it was a lot of it was a it's a lot of bullshit. It's a lot of bullshit. And and again, I, and I think that that does go into this whole buying is an owning thing. But it's the audacity of him saying that is what is what gets me. And I think it's what gets a lot of people pissed off off of like social media because I know that on Twitter, also known as X now, but no one calls it X. It's just Twitter. On Twitter, that's what everyone was saying. They're like, they're saying, okay, well, if buying isn't owning, pirating isn't stealing. So I just pulled up, um, at least Microsoft's ter- uh, terms of sales, mm-hmm. and for software licenses and use rights. So basically, you go to Microsoft Store or somewhere where you could buy a game or software from Microsoft. Software and other digital content made available to you through the store is licensed, not sold to you. So you're buying the ability to play the game, but you don't own it anymore. Yeah, see, it makes no sense. I, I, I get, I get. Maybe there's what the they're wording it. Maybe they're saying you don't own the IP. You know what I mean? It's... Well, because okay, so so let, let's get let's get serious here. You don't actually own the game. You own a copy yeah. of the game. Yeah. So owning just the license to the game, that, that is what gives you the permission to play the game. But is it right of them to take away, to deny the service that, that you bought, you paid for, by taking away your ability to play this game? Is it right it, for the it, state it to depends. take away your driver's license? It depends it's a what driver's, you did It's to... a license. It depends on it depends on if you drank or whatever. If you broke the law, yes. Yeah, yeah. it depends what condition you broke for that stipulation. Yeah, for exactly. License: If you drink and drive, or you know, do drugs and drive, you're breaking the law. You're breaking the condition that allows you to have a license. But if for, but if they just take games. your license away for no reason, if they're just like "fuck you," I'm taking that. Mm-hmm. That's, that's theft. That's theft. That is for, theft. For games that. You know, you reverse engineer that you hack that you do something to alter that code. They have every right to take that license from you to make it so you can't play the game. I can kind of understand that. That that's understandable. But but, but for they they shouldn't be able to do it for no reason just because you don't own the game. And, this, yeah. and I'm going to put this out here. This is the start of a of what sounds to be ultimate power corrupts ultimately. Yeah. Okay. To where they're going to be like, okay, well, guess what? You can only get to play this since we own the license and you don't own the game and da 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 da. You only get to play this for three months. I don't care how much you paid for it. Okay. Um, I, I just got a Ubisoft terms of sale too. Grant of license. At the time you have completed your order of subscription, credits, and or additional content as applicable or otherwise when you acquire these, Ubisoft grants you a personal, private, and non-commercial revocable and limited license to obtain and use such content. Look, I understand wanting to protect your, your intellectual property. I understand wanting to, uh, 
to put that out there in case someone hacks and you want to get rid of them, that's a good reason. That's a good. That's a good deterrent, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But I can see someone getting a little power fucking hungry and just mm-hmm. ruining it for everyone. Ubisoft, you're gonna go bankrupt. Is what's gonna happen. People, yeah. are- if not bankrupt, then I don't think they'd go bankrupt. I think they just end up with a lot less uh users and yeah they're uh, they're gonna go poor they're not gonna make as much money they're gonna wind up going bankrupt because what they're gonna do is they're gonna see some streamer playing one of their games that's got you know 20 million subs and they're not gonna like the content that they see or they're gonna revoke their license or they're gonna be jealous that that person's making money off of the gameplay exactly and all it takes is one dipshit in that position to make that call, and that company is going to go fucking belly up and bought by fucking Microsoft. One goddamn Kathleen Kennedy. That's all they need. Yep. See, and in cases like that where if they don't give a actual reason other than, oh, well, this person's more popular, or we don't like this person, that person could, in the end, if conditions are right for how they word it, can end up suing Ubisoft. Oh, yep. And that I guarantee you that's what's gonna happen. And that's where they're gonna go broke. Exactly, Grizz. Yep. Yep. Like like I, I honestly could sue fucking Ubisoft because I, I misplayed my game. Look, look, I'm gonna put this out there. We're all gamers, we love video games. Uh first of all, what new games have Ubisoft come out with that's like worth fucking getting? The crew motor uh, motor fest. That's a racing game, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not everybody likes racing that's, games. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's your own opinion. Yeah, I know, but that's uh, me. That's it's because racing Creed. games are stupid, my opinion. And Assassin's Assassin's, Creed. Assassin's Creed's a great franchise, but it's gotten boring. Yeah, because it's just the same exact thing, just a different timeline. It's Skull and Bones. Sk- okay, you got me on Skull and Bones. God damn it! I I played the crap out of the closed beta and closed alpha, and I. Ooh, I love it. I'm I'm definitely excited for Skull and Bones. I can't god damn it, you got me there. Um but that's the <laughs> only game. You know what I mean? Like I, I about the Avatar game. What's that? Avatar, uh Frontiers of Pandora. I, I saw that I wasn't interested. I'm I I, I like the movies, but I didn't like them that much. The that's Far just Cry. me though. What game? For the Far Cry series? Hmm. That yeah, you know what they've, but it seemed like they're just shitting Far Cry games out now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's literally it's literally the same. For yeah, it is. It is. Assassin's Creed. Just like Far Cry is basically, like, oh, I'm so torn. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Now I have to learn things, and then it's it it's been like that since Far Cry One. Yeah, and it's. There's nothing new. They're just shitting out the same fucking franchise, and it's. And Wild knows that I love the Assassin's Creed. I love I love the one and, and two in the Assassin's it, Creed. It, what broke me was, um, Syndicate. That was a shit game. I got. Syndicate, I think was that I, the one with the twins. No, that's the one where they're like in uh, England, and like you have to create your own gang and all mm. that. And, I thought it that was, was the Fry Twins. Yes, yes. I, that was Syndicate. I that one just ruined all I, for me. All I know is I played lie. one and two, and then I got bored of it. That's it. I didn't even not beat two. Lie, I haven't gotten that far in Assassin's Creed. Only one I've gotten relatively far in was Odyssey. Mm. But the Assassin's Creed franchise as a whole is just boring. It's the same yeah. shit, and it just like Far Cry. You know, um, the only thing I can think of, like you said, the only thing I can think of that that has any type of weight to it that's meat and potatoes, other than something that we're not used to, skull is skull and bones. And that I'm excited for that. That it, I loved it. I loved the idea of it when they first talked about it. The, we needed okay. something that wasn't uh, wasn't Sea of Thieves. It was there was there was kind of an updated, better version mm-hmm. of that. And we're getting it with skull and bones. But <sighs> uh, another good series. It would be the Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, Rain- not Rainbow Six Siege, but Rainbow Six in general for a series. Yeah, I, yeah. I can see that. That's I I wasn't that big a, big into that, but I, I played a few of them. Or, oh, what's what's that one where you're a hacker? Uh, 
Was it war dogs. Uh, something dogs, something? bulldogs, war dogs, uh, something dogs, watchdogs, watchdogs? There you go. Yeah, it's like GTA, but you're a hacker. Well, yeah. uh, GTA or Assassin's Creed, but you're a hacker. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it. They, I mean, I get they got some good games, but they're think about that. Think about this with think of like compare them to Bethesda, or <laughs> or something. They're not that. They're not. They don't got that many hits, dude. They might have had no, a bunch of hits in the past. Uh, no, but Ubisoft games weren't as buggy. <laughs> Fallout 76. Oh, uh, well, we're not even going to talk about how shitty that game started. But that's. <laughs> but my point is, is that but at least Bethesda has a, a good lineup. You know, mm-hmm. a, like a, a, a constantly good lineup. You know, when the, the next the next Fallout game comes out, I guarantee you there's going to be a bunch of people just waiting to play it, myself included. Um. You know, and it, it, of course, it's going to have the same bugs and bullshit that all the other games had because they never update the fucking the graphics or anything like that, other than just to make it look pretty. But it still has the same issues, the coding. But uh, at least they're not out there going, Haha, "We can take your right away for 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 playing this anytime we fucking want to," despite the bugs, despite the bullshit. You know what I'm really yeah. liking about this podcast right now? What's that? What? <laughs> you guys are so focused. On this topic. Oh, you know what else makes you focused? Magic mind. Magic mind. Mm, magic mind. You know, you know uh, a lot of the ingredients uh, we, we've talked talked about. You know the the matcha, which amazing for caffeine. And you can taste it, mm. like yeah. You now there's also uh, let's see if I say this right. Ashwagandha. Ashwagandha. It, it, mm-hmm. It's kind of like a, a ginger root Mm -hmm. um and apparently it's been used medicinally since like six thousand bc so over eight thousand years it's been used medicinally to help relieve stress and anxiety that's freaking awesome because since we started taking this i i I know i've i've talked a while about it on the regular my stress level has gone down oh yeah Um, Mm -hmm. I don't get nearly as anxious as I used to, and I know Wild doesn't either. He used to be anxious about everything. Um, well, oh, that's yeah. that's just me. I'm anxious about everything all the time. But it, after but taking this, it's calmed me down a bit. Yeah, I, I've been able to see a big difference in your anxiety since since we started taking this magic mind. Now, here here's the big one that, that we were really contemplating um, sharing with you guys. But it's cordyceps mushrooms. No, not the ones. From the Last of Us. No one's clicking. <laughs> no but one it's is. Still, it's, it's still very, very powerful. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's very powerful and it's it's great for you. Yeah. It, it reduces your inflammation. I mean, uh, when we did the podcast with Monster, he talked about how the inflammation in his knees have gone down drastically. And he had, and he had like and, three freaking. Uh, yeah, he's had three knee surgeries. Yeah. And. The guy's not even 35 years old yet, and he's had three knee surgeries. And for as long as I've known him, his knees have been swollen. Yep. And since we started taking this magic mind, his knees are not swollen. Well, he's able to get back to the gym and do what he likes to do. Oh, yeah. Which is powerlifting. Mm-hmm. And he says that it's it's not bothering his knees at all. He'll go to the gym, be there for a couple hours, come home, and his knees are just fine. It's... Well, the I mean, cordyceps it, also it it, it uh, brings up your immune system and strengthens your immune system, which is also freaking awesome. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Um, I find myself not being as sick, uh, which it's you know, in, in magic this the drink, the magic mind shot is known for keeping you kind of focused, keeping you kind of uh, on a mental state of of uh, tunnel vision. You want to get what you need done. It's called the anti procrastination drink for a reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's helped me a lot. I've I've been going back to college and it's I, I know I'm not the only one that falls asleep during history class. Oh yeah. <laughs> I oh, can yeah, actually I stay it. awake with it and I'm missing um, we got another another one is lion's mane mushroom, which you've heard us talk about. It's the fluffiest mushroom out there. I'll tell you that much. Um it just seems like a really good set of, of ingredients that come together that just kind of make things good. And for those of you out there wondering, it has no sugar. It is nut free. It's vegan, keto, and paleo friendly. Oh, that's mm-hmm. awesome! 
I didn't even know that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's that was one of my uh, big worries because I'm a diabetic. Mm. I have to like I I have to watch my sugar. I can still eat you know eat and drink sugar. Mm. I was that was one of my main worries of Magic Mind, but I read because the the first batch I got actually has an information card on it about a lot of things in it and in big letters zero sugar oh yeah i love it and as far as work goes i you know when i while i was taking it i would i would more i was more aware of my surroundings i was more kind of focused i was more uh i knew what was going on around me and i could speak a little better easier to articulate what you were thinking thank you those are the words i've used in the past and that's that's exactly what i'm trying to say it makes you it makes it easier to articulate what you're thinking into words and mm-hmm. it it's it's amazing our viewers should know we're not the only ones talking about magic mind oh it's very true mm-hmm. like it's true we have our own podcast you're listening to it and watching it right now uh but i know a lot of people watch the joe rogan experience oh yeah <laughs> yeah and he's actually talked about magic mind on his podcast and he thinks it's amazing oh he he totally backs it and it's he it's does. awesome he does. I saw an article on it. I don't watch him, but I saw an article on it that uh, the Kardashians were talking about it. Jeez. So if you guys are interested in this product, you guys want to try it for yourself, you can go to www.magicmind.com slash NITNSD. That'll get you up to 56% off your subscription for the next 10 days only with our code NITNSE20. Yeah. So go check it out, guys. We're, we're, we back this 100%. It's freaking awesome. Back to the topic. Fix your shit, Ubisoft. Fix your shit, yeah. Rockstar. I mean, Ubisoft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same same more or less rockstars rockstar you know rockstar is actually getting to be as bad with the whole gta plus bullshit but that's another podcast that's you, I, you know where that came from shatter huh the the fixture shit rockstar no so wild myself monster and well uh we were playing red dead redemption when it first came out when we were trying it online uh yeah. red dead redemption 2 the online the online like trial i guess you can call it yeah B- before okay. they did the the good patch well, yeah okay so we're we made our own little posse we're riding across the plane and we're heading somewhere we're gonna go kill a bunch of animals and sell their their pelts and their their mm. meat and we're running across the plane, and all of a sudden, my horse just disappears. And I'm falling into a canyon. <laughs> <laughs> and as I'm falling, I just yell, Fix your shit, Rockstar! <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, guys. I, I think that's a good spot to stop the podcast. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or anything you want to talk to us about, or even tell us to... Uh, to review, talk about snacks, anything, you can call us at a number. And you know who knows that number? Grizzly McBee knows that number. I sure do, Wildfire One. And that number is 559-997-6803. Again, that number is 559-997-6803. Give us a call. Let us know what you want us to watch, what you want us to play, what you want us to eat. Maybe not necessarily in that order. Yeah, as long as you don't tell us to eat a dick, okay? But unless they're gummies, you know, gummies, then I, I mean, <laughs> I put I put more questionable shit in my or, mouth. Or you know, Satan's toe in shape of a dick, but yeah, hey, to each their own. I'm not doing that again, Wild. You can't. Uh, hey, that. you know, you did it once. We're, I'm not going to ask you to do that again. You lost. You lost a challenge. That's what happens. I did. I did. So, and, and like we said last podcast, I know that Grizzly and Monster finally got their challenge settled, and they're going to do uh, what's going to be called the Naruto Ramen. The, the Naruto Ramen Challenge. Yes. We're, who can eat the most ramen? And whoever the, I think I think we you guys agreed that whoever loses has to pay. Whoever loses has to pay. 
Oh, so it's gonna be it's and it's gonna be a very expensive expensive challenge, but it's gonna be fun and worth it. What Good. sucks for me is the meds I'm on makes it to where I have no appetite. <laughs> well, hopefully, I, don't, I was gonna say hopefully by then maybe it'll be better, so, but you never know. So you're gonna have to prepare like if, if Golden Crow is opening up for the first time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I think it's great because our last challenge before this was a weight loss challenge. And now this one is like, how much can you fucking opposite. stuff yourself? It's like, up and down. <laughs> Why couldn't you guys want me to be a part of this challenge? I would have fucking loved this challenge. Uh, it, like, I, I know I'm several states away, but I would still, like, I, I just bought a 24-pack of ramen. I would make and eat all the ramen. Oh, no, they're going, they're, we're, we're going to go to a, a I know, I know I, I'm yeah. saying we're going to go to a sushi yeah. place. We're going and to have a, authentic a ramen. Sushi place. And oh, it's going to be great. Yeah. It's, it's just like the ramen from the show. Yeah. Ooh, that sounds With amazing. the eggs, the meat, and everything. So what I got to do is eventually, like, when you get when you end up getting down here, Grizz, I'm, we're going to go, I'm going to try and talk to someone at that place and let maybe get our own booth in the back or something and then tell them what we're going to do and record yeah. it and let them know we're going to record it probably on our phone. So, all right, guys, you know what? We'll end the podcast. We want to thank you for watching. We thank you for listening. We'll see you next week when we do God knows what topic. Uh, we're, I'm going to end this with uh fuck you, Ubisoft. You guys want to join me on that? Yeah. Fuck you, Ubisoft. Fix your shit, Ubisoft. <laughs> <laughs> so then we'll see you next week, guys. You stay nerdy. Stay sexy. Always.